Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, I've got a video this morning uh, that's kind of a result of a car that I'm working on right now uh, for a customer. So uh, this car has a lot of different electrical problems that I've discovered already. Um, so I've been kind of going through the engine harness and, you know, just tightening up a bunch of things, right? There's some shorts, a few other little things. So got all that stuff buttoned up, but the car still won't won't start and stay running. So the the issue this car really came in for, other than getting tuned once this is fixed, is the car starts every time, but as soon as it starts, no matter what you do with the throttle, it's like it's not getting any gas, and it immediately just dies. It, it maybe runs for a couple seconds and then dies, but it, it starts really healthy. Um, you know, it doesn't appear that there's any mechanical issues with the car, but it just won't stay running. So after I got all the, the wiring stuff kind of sorted out in the engine bay and a couple other places, Plugged in the quarter horse, did some data logging, and this is what I found. And so I'm going to walk you through this, and then I'm going to show you what I figured out was the actual issue. So here's an attempt at me starting the car. If you look down at this bottom area, this is the RPMs. Uh, so you can see that we're at zero. Car fires up. RPMs jump up to almost 2,000. They come back down for just a second, and within a few seconds, the car dies. Turn the key, start it up, same thing. You know, and I'm pedaling it like crazy, doing whatever I can with the throttle, but ultimately it comes back down and it dies. One last attempt, and somehow on this last try, and I'm not sure how I managed to do this, but I did get it to stay running with, you know, keeping my foot in it. Uh, but it, it just wasn't right, and then eventually, after I stopped logging, it died anyways. So here's what I noticed in the log. So the first thing, uh, and just kind of working my way through this, was the throttle position sensor. So you notice that it, it's basically flatlined through most of this log, and it's flatlined at 1.25 volts, which we can see here on the left. And that's a very specific number that I'm going to point to in a second in the uh, in the calibration. This is an A9L, by the way, uh, just mass air fox body. But this 1.25 volts is a specific number. When you look at the tune, there's something called this uh, initial throttle position value it's at 1.25 and the way it's described is this is where it goes to when the throttle position sensor has failed. It has to kind of report something to the computer so it can try to make some decisions. So it flatlines it at 1.25. Now it, it did have a couple little bumps here, this yellow line at the top, where like here it's at 1.29 volts, but I guarantee you I was way, way further in the throttle here. Um, so it's either flatlined at 125 or 129. I'm not sure why it got this, but Either way, it's, it's obvious to me that this sensor is failed and there's something totally wrong. Next thing I happen to notice is both the air temperature and the coolant temperature stay flat through the entire log. Now I realize, uh, you know, the car didn't stay running for a long time, so I don't expect it to warm up. But the truth is, it's hot as hell. It's Oklahoma. And it's, uh, you know, when I was doing this test, it was probably about 90 degrees in the garage. So even just sitting there, you know, these sensors should be showing higher than 60 degrees Fahrenheit. But regardless, even when we got to this point, I know it's not a long time, but the car was running for, you know, 15 seconds through this part of the log and at, you know, almost 2,000 RPMs all through here. It, that temperature would have moved at least four or five degrees. So, so far we've got a definitely a failed throttle position sensor. We've got a, an air and coolant temp that stayed just flat at 60 degrees the entire time. We go to the uh, barometric air pressure sensor. It shows zero the entire time, but you know the wiring looked good. It's all hooked up. And when you look at the idle air duty cycle, uh, you know it's once we start the car, it goes up like you'd expect it to. Right after it fires, it goes up to full duty cycle, starts to taper down a little bit, 68%, 65, 60. And right when you notice this little blip right here on the throttle position where it unexpectedly goes up to 1.29 volts you notice that's exactly where this thing starts to flatline and from here through the rest of this log look at your value 54.99 for the uh, idle air valve duty cycle and it flatlines there and it basically did the same thing here once it started up on these other attempts it flatlines at 54.99 started up flatlines at 54.99 so what what's going on with this car uh, and, and the biggest thing right here is your mass air meter nothing you, you you have basically zero volts all at all times i mean car's not even running right here it's got 0.004 volts turn the key start it and it 
kind of flickers around at like 0 0.009 volts, but I mean, that's basically nothing. So here's what's going on, guys. Uh, this computer's fried. And I want to show you how I found this. Uh, and this is a common problem. And this isn't, you know, I, I don't want to hear all the, oh, crusty old harness, you know, 30-year-old uh, technology. I don't want to hear that stuff. This is not a problem uh, that should have happened. This is a wiring problem. This is something that's, that's caused by a user doing something wrong. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to jump over to this picture that I took of the computer when I pulled it out. So this is an A9L stock Fox body computer. This bottom part of the picture, this is uh, you know basically where your 60 pin harness goes in. And this is flipped upside down once I took the board out. I flipped it upside down to look at it. And if you look at this spot right here, and I'm going to zoom in on this, there's your issue. So sometimes when you, when you look this up, guys will talk about this as like a burnt tracer. So each one of these little light green areas is, is a tracer that ultimately is responsible to, to pass a signal from one place to another. And this tracer right here is burnt. And so this is what guys talk about as like the, the pin 46 uh, burnt tracer. And so that pin 46, when you look at a pinout diagram, uh, pin 46 is really critical for, uh, for the signal returns for pretty much all your sensors. So when this is burnt out right here, uh, you're, you're basically going to lose all your sensors and nothing's going to work right and obviously the car won't run. So I wanted to give you guys a quick look at that and the way you can kind of tell where you're at here uh, when you're looking at yours. This is kind of the only spot on the circuit board that looks like this. You'll see this one little uh, lighter guy here, 2002. You'll see three of these brown ones in a row. And forgive me because I'm not an electrical guru, uh, so I don't even know what the hell these things are called, but I'll call them light color, three brown. <laughs> Uh, and we, we go down here, and then you've got the burnt tracer uh, from here to here. So this is our issue. So I'm going to send this off to get it repaired, um, and then this will get taken care of. This is not a big deal to, to repair, but uh, I want to talk about why this happened and how you can make sure it doesn't happen on your car. So the next thing I'm going to jump over to uh, is, zoom out here, this picture. So what you're looking at here, this is the harness for the oxygen sensors, the factory oxygen sensors. So essentially this harness, you know, at the, the point of the sensor, it plugs into one sensor, it plugs into the other. Those two things come together and they form a Y where they meet. And then there's one, uh, one harness coming out, which is this one. So they've already wide off, they've come this way, and this is where it ultimately plugs in with the rest of the engine harness. And so it's kind of an eight pin plug right here. And the thing I want you to pay attention to is this purple wire right here, this purple with yellow stripe. This is a jumper wire. And if you notice, there's basically four pins, and then on the next row there's four pins. So what you'll notice is this is taking up the two pins uh, on one row of four. It takes up two pins on the side. And now this jumper wire too, uh, when this is wrapped from the factory, there's a whole bunch of tape around this. So it will almost appear as though these, this is not a jumper and that these are individual wires, but once you take off about four or five inches of the tape here, uh, you'll, you'll see that it's just kind of the loop is taped up in there. So not super obvious until you take the tape off. Uh, but anyways, there are a lot of different O2 sensor harnesses over the years with the Fox bodies. And if you have the wrong harness, which essentially means the wrong position of this jumper, uh, going to this particular computer, the five-speed computers, that's what happens. You fry it because ultimately that tracer is only built to handle a certain amount of, uh, of uh, voltage. And by, by rewiring this the wrong way and having a mismatch on the harness, it just it overloads that circuit and you end up burning that tracer. So I did a little bit of research um, looking for, you know, what are all the variations of the harnesses out there and how can you identify what you have? Is it the right thing? Uh, do you need to switch it? Do you need to fix something? And I stumbled across something very nice uh, from uh, good dude Rod, Ron Francis. So Ron Francis has been in the game for a long time, as a lot of you guys know, doing wiring stuff. And he sells uh, kind of, you know, replacement harnesses for a lot of things on these Mustangs. And he offers replacement harnesses for uh, the O2 sensors, both in standard length. So if you have kind of factory headers or factory, you know, shorty style headers with the O2 sensor locations being where they were from the factory. Uh, and then he sells an extended version of the same harness that gives you an extra two feet uh, going to each O2. So if you have long tubes and your O2 sensors move way back on the car, 
uh, he's got a harness that can do that as well without having to use extensions. And, you know, and a lot of guys will do that. They'll just throw an extension on. You, know, you can buy them from BBK and, and a million other guys. They're not super expensive. Uh, but anyways, when I was looking at Ron Francis's uh, documentation and his, and his uh, options, I kind of see something really nice here. So this is a, a, just a shot from the Ron Francis catalog on his website right now. And notice that when we get into these, these Fox body oxygen sensor harnesses, there's a whole bunch of different items here. So there's a, there's a part number for 86 and older. There's a couple part numbers for 87 and 93, and there's some newer stuff on here too from the SN95 cars, but, um, but really we're kind of focused on the Fox body here. But you notice from 87 to 93, there's a part number for automatic, there's a part number for manual. So what I did next is I actually went to these, uh, and then I looked up the instruction manual for each of these two harnesses right here to see what we got. So this car that I'm working on, this is an 89, uh, it's an A9L mass air car and it has a manual transmission in it. So next I wanna go and we're gonna look at the automatic transmission instruction guide. So there you go, you've got the harness, and like I said, you've got you know one wire or one uh, connector, and then it wise and goes to the other two. But when you look at this, it just flat out tells you uh, this is gonna cover all the automatic transmissions for that, that period of time. Not much to it. But when we go over here and we look at the one for the manual transmission that he offers, he goes into great detail to say that there's a jumper wire at one point in this harness, and right there, you must put the jumper in the right location or it will result in ECM damage. And this is exactly what you just saw in that other picture, the damage. So this is what the main, the main wires of the harness look like. Again, you've got two rows of four. So all these wires are gonna be hooked up in where they are regardless, uh, that's fine. And it's telling you right here that if you've got a speed density computer in 8788 uh, with a manual transmission, the jumper wire that comes with this kit, you just don't use it at all. Uh, so you basically would just have these wires. If you have an 89 to 90 manual transmission, you would, you would install this this way. So these two black wires here, this is actually a jumper coming around. So it's kind of the purple wire you saw on, uh, on the, the stock setup. So it jumps across the two, two banks of four to the two on the edge and goes across here. Uh, and then if you have a, a newer one, so this was 89 to 90, if you've got a newer one that's 91 to 93, you notice instead of jumping straight across, it jumps from this side diagonally into here and it leaves this, this empty. So going back to uh, the car that I'm working on right now, jump over here, you can see that it was on the same side, the same bank of four, and two wires side by side, which basically would put it here and here. The 91 to 93 manual isn't set up that way. The 89 to 90 manual isn't set up that way. The 87 to 88 manual is not set up that way. That's the automatic harness. And so when I talked to the owner of the car, I said, hey, do you know if this car was actually uh, originally an automatic car? And he, he talked to some previous owners and said, yeah, this apparently was an automatic car. So at some point, uh, you know, he added in the, the proper computer, the A9L, uh, when he did a, a five-speed swap or when somebody did the five-speed swap, but they left this harness alone. And this is what's ultimately fried the computer, which is, uh, you know, it's gonna cost some serious dollars now to go get that repaired. So the big takeaway is this, guys, if you know, you're putting a build together, getting it running, you're going to use a stock computer, uh, and you're planning, for, you know, it's a five-speed car, you're going to use an A9L, you know, mass air thing, you need to double check this harness first before you even plug that computer in. You need to make sure that you've got this jumper wire configured the right way. And if you don't, you can pull out the little red lock on the other side, be very careful with the pick. You can depin, you know, this jumper however you need to, and then it'll just push right in the other connectors where it needs to be. You can fix this problem. Keep it from ever, you know, messing up your computer. But uh, just kind of my little PSA for the day. You, you need to make sure you've got the right setup or you will fry your computer. You will lose all sensors. The car will not run, and you're going to have to fix your harness and your computer. So... I uh, thought this would be helpful, and I wanted you guys to see what the data looked like. This is the first time I've ever uh, actually experienced this with a car firsthand. Uh, it was cool that I could see some of the data, and you could see you know, what's going on there. Um, so just one, one quick look again at that data. Your ISC, 
is is going to show flatlined at 50, 54.99 uh, percent duty cycle, which is part of the uh, the computer's calibration. You see it right there. When the throttle position sensor and the MAF fail, 54.999 duty cycle is what it defaults to. So you can see that there. The other two, uh, the temperature sensors both showed at 60 degrees at all times. The BAP got nothing, it showed zero. And your throttle position hit its default at 1.25. And then the MAF basically got no voltage. So now you know, that's what it looks like. Uh, that's the burnt tracer, it can be easily repaired. Uh, there's guys like Josh Popper uh, at Encore that, that have been doing this a long time repairing these things, uh, and he has a very, very good reputation. So if you guys are looking for somebody to do that repair work, there you go. I'm even going to try to talk to him soon and see if he wants to you know, do some kind of a partnership for the website I'm putting together uh, so that you know, when you guys come to my website and you, know, you need this kind of service, I can ultimately just forward that business over to him and, and just kind of help drive things his way. So... Guys, if you need anything, let me know. Appreciate it. Good luck. Godspeed.